A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees. So he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection or angels or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. <clears throat> Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. This dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, you are. O Lord, my lot of portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. Therefore, my heart is glad, my soul rejoices, my body too abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path of life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Old Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world does not know you, but I know you. And they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known, that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so we're still plowing through John chapter 17, Jesus' high priestly prayer. This is arguably not only the most beautiful part of the prayer, but you could say of, of all of the entire Bible. Everything that Jesus says is, uh, is just beautifully consummated here in these words. Just reread them too if you have a chance, right? He says, Father, they are your gift to me. We are a gift. If you think about that, right? We are a gift to God. Okay? Often we think, you know, God is the one that's got to give us, us the gifts. And, you know, maybe life is a drudgery and it's painful and... Our life is a curse, not a blessing. That's not how God sees us, right? We, we are a gift to him. And then uh, he just, he encourages us. I've made known to them your name and I will make it known that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. So God in heaven, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are experiencing from all eternity love. Love in the purest original form. It's, it's pure beauty. Think of the most beautiful thing you've ever experienced, whether it was on a vacation somewhere, um, 
an experience with a loved one or something you, you know, ate or witnessed or saw or whatever, right? Just, just pure delight, pure beauty, bliss, joy, whatever, love in a way. That's what heaven's going to be like times a million. And that's what God experiences in a way that we can't even describe. It's not times a million. It's infinite. That kind of love is what God wants us to experience. And that we will experience when we get to be with him one day in heaven. That's the hope that we hold on to as Christians, as Catholics. That's what Paul was striving for, that love in heaven with the Trinity. That's why he was able to remain calm in the midst of this turmoil. When uh, he, he was having to debate with the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin and the Sadducees. It's kind of an ugly situation, but Paul, he's got his eyes focused on the goal. And it's why we also, you know, if you're struggling as well during this time, reread that psalm that we had, the responsorial psalm, Psalm 16. Not just keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge, but therefore my heart is glad, my soul rejoices, my body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Our souls will not be abandoned to hell. We will be able to get to heaven if we stay close to Jesus. And our bodies and our souls will not undergo corruption. Even if we are physically ill, God will glorify us. Again, all the beauties of our faith. Amen.